It means everlasting or eternal. Now listen, guys. If you believe in everlasting life, then you have to accept the same words for eternal, everlasting punishment. It is the same word. Either we have resurrection, we have heaven, we have a place we go to, a place that's promised to us, or we're going to go to the devil's hell. It is the same word. You cannot get away from it. It is exactly the same in the Greek. So I submit to you today that we have everlasting life for those who believe and put their faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, let's get this thing started. Somebody going to have to say... Come on, preacher. There you go. You be, you be the sound. All right. I want you to notice this very first one. Though it's not really prominent in the Old Testament, but I want you to look at what the prophets said and some of the things they did. If you don't mind, Maestro, take me to the very first one I gave you, Ezekiel. Do you have it pulled up? This is Ezekiel 37. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's the whole passage. But what I want you to see, if you look up in your Bibles, it says here, the hand of Jehovah was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of Jehovah and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. And these were dry bones, and these were dead bones, and, and Israel had been dispersed, and they had all kinds of issues, and they had all kinds of problems. And Ezekiel said, hey, I want to show you that these bones will rise again. They may look dormant right now. They may look dead. They may like, look like there's no hope. But I'm telling you, it's going to hook back together. We're going to put the tendons and the, the muscles and everything. And guess what? These bones will shout again. Now, he's talking about Israel. And Israel became a nation in 1948. And now in the New Testament, it says, what? Well, one of these days, Israel will see who he is. Right now on the Temple Mount, we got a place for the Christians. we got a place for Islam. And they're getting ready to build a temple for the Jews and they're going to do all the sacrifices and start all over again and the Antichrist is going to step up and say look who I am I am God you all bow down and worship me you all see who I am he's going to do all kinds of great miracles and people are going to be sidetracked and bewildered and they're going to say come we found him and we found him and you know what's going to happen he's going to trick a lot of people even the elect those who are not taken up in the rapture he's going to take them and deceive them and for the first three and a half years, he's going to look good. He's going to look like he's a God and all these things. He's going to answer everything for the Christians. He's going to answer everything for Islam. And he's going to answer everything for the Jews. And then in the middle of that three and a half years, he's going to defile the, 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 the temple and everything else. And he's going to come together and say, hey, we don't need the Christianity. We don't need Islam. And we don't need the Hebrews no more. I am the God, the only resurrected one. And if you do not receive my mark and take the, this, the, this RFID you know, this implant in your body, you will not be able to buy, sell, and trade. You need to line yourself up with me. And I told Miss Cindy this morning, listen, if we are not raptured, listen, pray for the rapture, but be prepared for the tribulation because we could have interpreted it wrong. And I'm here to tell you, it's going to come to a place where it's going to ask... It's going to capture these people. Read the Bible. It, 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 you can chase it all the way through. It says this right here. It says there's going to come a place in time where they may take the small children of those who are left behind during the tribulation. And they're going to say to this one, Mom and Dad, unless you take this mark, we'll kill that kid. You better let them kill that kid right there. And you go ahead and take the next breath. Because if not, you take that mark of the beast. Let me tell you what. You're signing your life, your soul, your eternity into a devil's hell. This ain't no game. The game's in the UK and Florida and Arkansas. All of that's a game. Horseshoes and those games we play like that. And volleyball and, and basketball. That's games. But guys, this right here ain't no game. This is where you've got to come right with God. You've got to come right with yourself. You've got to sit down. And you've got to look at who you are between God. You can fool me, I can fool you. We can fool each other. But let me tell you something. We cannot fool God. Amen? There's no way. He knows who we are. Listen, guys, we all wear masks. We all have something that we do and we're trying to cover up. But listen, you've got to get down with God. When you lay your head on your pillow at night, can you look at yourself and mirror your soul and say, hey, man, I've done some things wrong today. Lord, please help me, forgive me, and let me start off again a new day. Amen? Because if you don't, guess what? He's just gonna let them compile up. This right here is the way. This right here is the way that Satan makes me look. He makes me look like all these markings that are on my life. You know, he takes it like this right here, and he says, "Oh, oh, preacher, you're somebody, right? Let me show you something." He says. 
This right here, this is a big sin in your life right here. And here's one, and here's one, and here's one. All these things. And this is what Satan wants me to look at every day. Oh, you made a mistake here. You did this outside of marriage. You did drugs, alcohol. You done this, violence and everything. And you know, you got hate and all this in your heart. That's the way Satan wants you to look. But let me tell you something. You need to understand this right here, right now. You know what? That's my who you might see in me and I might see in you. But let me tell you something. This is the way God sees me. He sees me as white as pure virgin snow. He sees me as a vessel that's been cleaned by that cross, that shed blood. And you and I, we can rejoice. We can shout. We can get excited. We can dance if we want to. Because let me tell you why. God is on His throne. And if He's for me, who can be against me? Amen? If He is for me, what can you do to me? If He is for me, what is it that you can do? Absolutely nothing. Cut my throat. Slip my wrist. Put a bullet. Take a knife. Do whatever you want to do. Absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah! Come on, guys. Come on. That's, that's something, man. Lord, thank you. Amen? That's what it's about. We don't, we don't even begin to even grasp the, the gravity of what's taking place in our life. All we do is we go through the motions like everything else. We go through the motions of life. We go through the motions of church. We go through everything else. Let me tell you something. In a lot of churches, you can't tell the difference between a church and a honky-tonk. You can't tell the difference between a church and a Lions Club or the Quarters Club or any other of these... Civi- civi- any of the others. <laughs> Amen? You can't tell the difference. We're about taking up blood. We're talking about giving glasses for somebody. We got all these things are going on. And in the Old Testament, right here in Ezekiel, he says, let me show you there's a valley of dry bones and it don't look good. It's doom and gloom. But let me tell you something, Ezekiel. Let me tell you something, prophet. This nation, this Israel, these people, my people, they will come together again. And they will rise to the top. And they will be who I've called them to be. And we know that in May 14, 1948, not too long ago, some of you were alive, right? They stood up. The world stood up and said, we recognize Israel as a nation. That is prophecy. Now that's powerful. You tell me somebody right now, can you, can you prophesy something to me 2,000 years from now that will be true? Well, let me tell you something. This Bible's got over 1,000 prophecies and everyone has hit. It's 100%. There's no miss. There's no mistakes. There's no accidents. There's no what ifs. Everyone that's hit has been 100%. The nail on the head every time. No thumbnail mark. It's the nail hitting. You hear me? Yeah, hallelujah. That's right. Shout. We got something to shout about. Now I know that uh, I got a little old lady sitting behind Miss Joanne. I ain't going to mention her name. And she's sitting beside uh, Claudia. I'm not going to mention her name. But she's sitting right there. When the Razorbacks come on, all you got to do is just go by. Sneak by her house and just go up to the window. And here she is. Throw the ball. Shoot. Jump. Run. Am I telling the truth? Come on, Emma. She says something like this. What's wrong with you all? You idiots, come on, man. He's open over here. Throw it, run, punt, kick, do something. <laughs> so you hold him too, ain't you? Yeah. And guys, listen, if we can get it down and dress up like a dog or a hog or something like that and get on all fours and boo, ah, and we can do all that stuff, we can come in here to this church and we can stand and shout and say hallelujah to the Lamb because He is on His throne. Yeah. Woo, man, I'm telling you, that stuff will preach. That stuff will get you through your life. Let me show you another one. Now you have to go back and you have to read all of Ezekiel 37. I ain't got the time and, and I know you're tired and I'm tired. Amen? Let's go to uh, the second one there. If you don't mind, young lady. This one's found in Isaiah chapter 19, 26 verse 19. Now I want you to hear what the prophet says. Isaiah 26 and verse 19. Your deed will live. The corpse will rise. You who lie in the dust, awake and shout for joy, for your dew is as the dew of the new dawn. And the earth will give birth 
to the departed spirits. Do you understand what that's saying? There's going to be a place and time that we're going to take our last breath. We're going to be, how many of us in here have experienced the loss of a loved one? How many of us have dug the graves or had them dug and we lowered our bodies down? In Kentucky where I was at, I, I, many times I, I grabbed hold of the straps and we put the body in the grave and I stayed there with them until it was covered up because I didn't plan ahead. I've done it many times and I didn't mind doing it because they were short-handed and all those things. We've all done it. We've buried but well, let me tell you something that grave is not going to hold this body down this body will rise someday amen but that's not it that's the, forget all that forget about the body the spirit you know what the Bible says absent from the body is present with the Lord amen if I take my last breath here this very second my next breath will be in front of Jesus man what kind of hope can you have you can't have hope in the U.S. government. We bankrupt. We're trillions of dollars in debt. They're writing checks on money they ain't got. Miss CPA, do you run your business like that? I'm talking to you, Lisa. Now, I ain't going to say anything about the state because the, the Arkansas, you know, state, Kentucky state, Florida state, California, you know what? They're all doing things they can't do. They ain't got money. They, they're spending money they ain't got. Let me tell you something, guys. We can't do it that way. And Jesus, you know what he said? You, you're, putting your, you're putting your eggs in the wrong basket. You're putting your thoughts in things where the moth and the rust and everything can be destroyed. But let me tell you something. Put your treasures where no man can take it. Put your treasures where God says, I'll hold it and keep it and wait for you to come over here and rejoice and receive it. And one of these days we'll stand before a holy right is God and he'll say well done thy good and faithful servant come on up here and be with me and let's do what we need to do let's take care of business can you imagine a place with no tears no pain no suffering no death no evil to attract us and to pull us apart and the problem is today listen you young people I am sorry that we've become a society where we do not know what absolute truth is anymore we don't even know what a family is we can't even define that. And now we give ourselves over to our kids. You know, we're passing our condoms to, you know, second, third graders. We're telling them about, you know, this alternate lifestyle, that this is the norm. If you have a desire for the same sex as a little kid or a little boy or a little girl, hey, you know, that's the same thing. That's the norm. Hell, that ain't the norm. I won't say a bad word. I did say a bad word. Hell no, that ain't right. You hear me? That's straight out of hell. See, nobody wants to say this. Well, the government has, we have voted and we have said abortion is legal, so it's okay. Bull! I'll stop at that. That is not, listen, guys, that's straight out of hell. That is, the, you know, the, the pagans and all the people of the old, you know what they did? They did abortions to Moloch and stuff, and they laid their newborn babies in the belly of this, this stone or this brass or this gold creature, and they put fire underneath of it, and their babies were screaming. I told Christine a while ago, I said, man, to hear that baby, let her scream, let her laugh, let her holler, because that's life in the church. Amen? Let her be what she needs to be. Just don't get choked again. It's right it's, it's, it's excitement it's, 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 it's alive man we, we miss it guys we, we, we don't even understand we accept what they vote on who are they to tell us what we are to do who are they to tell us we can't say Jesus who are they to take out the ten commandments who are they to say we can't pray I'll tell you what the hell with all of them you know what? We need to pray for our president because God is the one who puts presidents and leaders in the places they need to be. We've got an obligation. But it does not mean that we've got to obey them to the point of going against God's holy word. Hallelujah? Huh? Is that right? But see, we don't, we don't think of it that way. Well, the government said that this is what we've got to do. Man, it just made me mad my whole life. We've had a hurricane. Get hold of the president. He's going to do a drive. He's going to do a flyby. He's going to look over. He's, he's going to look at, yeah. A lot of people dead down there. The floods and the hurricane and the tornadoes and the winds. Man, that's, let's write them a check. That ain't going to help nobody. Write me that check. I need somebody who's going to get down to my level and my hurt and my pain and my suffering and say, let me tell you, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, but let